Hello friends, welcome back to our series on mastering parallel programming in C Sharp. Today in part 7.1, we are unlocking a spin lock for efficient synchronization. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Ok, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel programming using PFX that is parallel framework extension libraries in C Sharp. If you have watched my previous videos, you probably remember this diagram. Well, today we'll go ahead one more step further and learn about a spin lock in detail, which is one of the spinning primitives. Unlocking a spin lock for efficient synchronization. In our last video, we learned about a spinning primitives, what they are and why they are crucial in parallel programming. We discussed their pros and cons and provided a brief overview of a specific types such as spin lock and spin weight. Today we are going to explore a spin lock in detail. So what is a spin lock? A spin lock is a type of a spinning primitive, a lock in .NET that makes a thread repeatedly check for a spin to see if the lock is free rather than pausing and waiting. So this is very useful when the lock will only be held for a short time as it keeps the thread active and avoids delays. Okay, so let's understand this way. Let's imagine you and your friend both want to use a computer but there is only one keyboard. You decide to take turns typing but instead of standing in line and waiting which is something like blocking, you keep looking over your friend's shoulder checking if they are done. So this is nothing but the spinning. Okay, explore this little further. Think this scenario without a spin lock. You and your friend both want the keyword at the same time, but the computer tells you, wait for your turn. So you sit down, relax and wait for a signal to start typing. But when you relax and wait, there is a delay in getting back up and starting to type again, causing a little bit of wasted time, right? Now, imagine scenario with a spin lock. Instead of sitting and relaxing, you keep standing behind your friend and continuously check if they are done. The moment your friend finishes typing, you instantly jump and start using the keyboard. This way you save the time it would take to get back up and start typing again. So now I am hoping you must have understood what a spin lock is and how it helps in saving time and synchronization well, right? Now let's talk about key characteristics of a spin lock. So number one, a spinning instead of blocking. What does it mean? When a thread tries to acquire a spin lock, it keeps checking. That means it's spinning to see if the lock becomes available. This can be much faster than context switching when the lock will be released very soon. So that's why we go for a spinning instead of blocking. Number two, no re-entrancy. What does it mean? No re-entrancy means that once a thread acquires a lock like a spin lock, it cannot acquire the same lock again until it has released it. If the thread tries to enter the lock a second time while still holding it, it will cause a deadlock or throw an error. If honor tracking is enabled, it throws an exception, otherwise it causes a deadlock. Number three, a struct value type. As we know, a struct is a value type. Similarly, a spin lock is a struct, not a class. This means it avoids the overhead of object allocation, but it also means that accidentally copying it can lead to errors. So we must be very careful to pass it by reference especially if used across map. Number four, when creating a spin lock, we can enable honor track. How we can enable honor tracking? It's very simple. Just pass true as a value in constructor while creating an instance of the spin lock. Anyway, we will talk about this in next section when we talk about implementation. So when we enable honor track, this adds extra overhead but it lets you check if the current thread already holds the lock and it will be very helpful if you go for debugging. Number 5 busy waiting. What does it mean? It means the thread holding the spin lock is essentially busy waiting. What does it mean by busy waiting over here? Busy waiting means actively checking for the lock to be released, right? Which consumes CPU size. This is efficient when the lock will be held for very short period but can waste CPU time if the lock is held for too long. Last but not the least, users path. When using a spin lock, we need to pass a lock taken variable to ensure that we know whether the lock was successfully acquired or not. Typically, we do this in a try finally block to ensure that the lock is always released even if an exception occurs. Now let's talk about when to use a spin lock. It's pretty straightforward. Number one scenario is sort critical section. We can use a spin lock when we can expect the critical section to execute very quick. Here I said critical section. What does it mean? It means it is the part of the code that needs to be synchronized and this part of the code gets executed quickly. So we say it's a sort critical section. So if the lock is held for too long, a spinning wastes CPU resources. So we need to make sure that we use a spin lock just for sort critical section. Okay. Number two, avoid in long running locks. If you need to hold a lock for a longer time, consider using more traditional synchronization mechanisms like monitor or mutex, which do not spin and waste CPU cycle. So we should avoid using a spin lock in long running locks. Now interesting part comes, how to use the spin lock. The spin lock implementation is pretty easy. 
we just need to follow four steps what are those steps step number one add the name so we need to add namespace system.threading that's what i have written using system.threading why we need to add this namespace because the system.threading namespace contains classes and methods for working with threads and thread synchronization by importing this we get access to the s class and other multi-threading utilities like thread step number two create an instance of the spin lock in this step we need to create an instance of the spin lock and mark it as static that's what i have written private static spin lock spin lock is equal to new spin lock so when we mark instance as an static it means i'm just going to share across all threads in the program so this spin lock is used to control access to a critical section ensuring that only one thread at a time can access it okay now come to the step number three create and start thread here i have created two threads t1 and t2 and both the threads runs the do work method that's what i have written thread t1 is equal to new thread do work thread t2 is equal to new thread do work and then what i'm doing i'm just using a start method that ensures that execution of each thread and finally i'm just using the join method of the thread that's what i have written t1 dot join t2 dot join so this join ensures that the main thread waits for t1 and t2 to finish before proceeding further and it makes sure that both threads complete before the program exit okay coming to the step number four enter and exit a spin lock in this do work method i have implemented enter and exit method of the spin lock in do method first of all i declared a boolean variable named lock tech and assign a value to the false that's what i have written bool lock taken is equal to false so this variable will help us to track whether the thread successfully acquired the spin lock or not that will be using inside this do work method okay then there is a try and finally block in try block i wrote the code for entering the spin lock that's what i have written a spin lock dot enter reference lock taken so with this line the thread tries to acquire the spin lock if the lock is available lock taken becomes true if the lock is held by another thread the current thread spins what does it mean by spin over here they continuously check until the lock is released and then I have given critical section placeholder over here and this is the place where we write the code that should only be executed by one thread at a time and the spin lock ensures that no other thread can enter this section when it's locked. Next we have finally block. In finally block we ensure the exit the spin lock by calling exit method of spin lock but we call exit method as long as it successfully acquired the lock and we check it in the if condition that's what i have written if lock tech. if lock is already required then only we are going to exit it so first we are ensuring to exit the spin lock with the help of this check and then finally i'm just calling this exit method of a spin lock by which i'm just exiting the spin lock basically i'm just leaving this lock altogether and we have written those things into finally block why because whether or not an exception occurs this finally blocks ensures that the thread releases the spin lock once it's done okay so that's how we can implement a spin lock for efficient synchronization okay so now let's switch to the visual studio and see all these things in action okay so here we are on visual studio here we are going to see the demo of how to use a spin lock to manage access to shared resources in a multi-threaded environment to show the demo what i have done i have created one console application named a spin lock demo that has program.cs in program.cs file first of all i have added necessary namespaces like using system using system.threading if you notice, I have written a step number one adding necessary names. So, as a part of a step number one, I have added this namespace system.threading. Why I have added? Because this spin lock struct is available in this namespace. I want to utilize this spin lock in our program. That's what I have added system.threading namespace over here. Then there is a class named program. In program class, first of all, as a part of a step number two, what I'm doing, I'm just creating an instance of the spin lock. That's what I have written a static a spin lock a spin lock is equal to new a spin lock and here in the constructor I am passing the true value when I pass true value in this constructor then I am saying that enable honor tracking also why I wanted to honor tracking because honor tracking helps the program know which thread it currently holds this lock so this can be very useful for debugging but it comes with a small performance anyway then there is a main method which is an entry point of this application so here first of all i'm just printing this statement demo of a spin lock in c -sharp. and then as a part of a step number three i am starting two threads that will attempt to use spin lock so here i have initialized two thread thread one and thread two and both the threads are calling work method and here i'm using a start method that basically starts a state thread one and a state two and then i'm just issuing join method of the thread class that's what I have written thread one dot join thread two dot join. It ensures that main thread will wait unless and until thread one thread two gets complete. Okay. And then finally, I'm just printing this statement. Both threads have completed. Now review this work method where we have implemented step number four. In work method, first of all, I have declared an initialized Boolean variable named lock taken with false value. That's what I have written bool lock taken is equal to false. And the try block step number four a, what I'm doing, I'm just attempting to enter the spin lock. That's what I have issued this statement. Spin lock dot enter. 
reference lock taken. So this is where the thread attempts to enter acquire the spin lock. So the enter method tries to lock the critical section. If successful, lock taken is set to true and the thread can proceed, right? So these two statements, console.writeLine statement and thread.sleep statement, it is a part of critical section, okay? That will be executed by one thread at a time. So what I'm doing in the console.writeLine statement, I'm just printing this statement. Manage thread ID has entered the spin lock. And then I'm just issuing the sleep statement. Basically, I'm simulating some work that holds the lock for a short period of, say, 500 milliseconds. That's what I have passed 500 in the sleep method. Then there is a finally block. So in finally block, I'm ensuring that a spin lock is always released. First, I'm checking whether lock was acquired or not. If it is acquired, then only I'm calling the spin locks exit method. That's what I have written. If lock taken, if it is true, then just issue this exit state. So each thread will print a message when it enters and exit the spin lock, right? We have seen that here I'm just entering the critical section, then I'm printing this statement and when I'm exiting the spin lock, then I'm printing this statement. So since only one thread can hold the lock at a time, so their entry and exit message will not overlap. Okay, so now you have seen how the program is structured, right? Okay, so let me execute this program and show this output to you. Okay, so output got appeared into this console window. Demo of a spin lock in C sharp got printed. So manage thread ID 9 enters the spin lock first, does it work and then exit. That's what. It has entered the spin lock and exited the spin lock. Similarly, manage thread ID 10 has entered the spin lock, does its work and then exit. So that's what it's entered the spin lock and has exited the spin lock. And after both threads complete their task, the program prints both threads have completed. Okay, so overall, this program shows how to use a spin lock to manage synchronization between two threads. It ensures that one thread can do its work at a time while holding the lock, preventing the other thread from accessing the critical section until the lock is released okay so that brings me to end up my session today to sum up we explored what a spin lock is a characteristic and also discussed how and when to use it in csa program overall we learned that a spin lock is a powerful and a specialized tool in parallel programming that can significantly improve performance in scenarios where locking is brief and contention is high however it must be used carefully to avoid wasting cpu resources and causing deadlock that's all for this video guys if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video